Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon listeners. Uh, if you just bear me a minute, let me share this video and I will start this program. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, listeners. This, this is going to be a brief program on history, uh, political history of the Gambia, a brief based on my perspective. And um, what I'm saying is based on how I understand it and um, the background I have over it, what I think, my opinions. I think it's, uh, <clears throat> it's quite important. And um, we are discussing the event of the rebel rebellion. Uh, the, um, we call it a rebellion. Some call it an attempted coup, end up to be a rebellion. And this was 1938, July 1981, uh, the um, Kukoi Samba Sanyang coup. And um, the importance of this, why am I coming for a brief? I'm actually <laughs> rushing to go to work. But um, uh, uh, Dembo Fati uh, wrote an um, article about it. And um, that inspired me to come out and uh, just have a brief discussion. Uh, it's quite important, for especially young people and some of us that might not have much uh, knowledge of what has transpired. Um, it's unfortunate there's not much written ab uh, about it, but I hope something will change soon. And um, someone will have, I mean, people will have to come out and start to write our history. And the the narrative will start from the leading to the coup. Um, and as I said, it's brief. I'm, I cannot cover everything as I even know it, but I'll try by almost uh, to give it, uh, give it context enough. Leading to the coup, um, uh, this is the late 70s to 81. There was a lot of tensions domestically and externally, uh, I mean, geopolitics. This is in Africa and, and the world for that matter. It was the time of the Cold War. And, um, Domestically, what was the problem? The marginalization of the opposition have taken um, um, an, I mean, effect and impacted on the hope of the people to contest the uh, uh, democracy. And um, the UP that stood chance then finally realized at the last elections before uh, 81 that they would be no more. Because I think that, that elections before 81 was the election they even have a, um, I mean, a, a, a collision between some MPs, uh, NCP, UP, Jibujang and others, I think few MPs, two or three MPs within ba Banjun and Sayokuna area had a collision for NCP, UP. That was the dying uh, time of the UP. Politically, we can see the effect of marginalizing opposition. 
people will not have that hope to bring about change to the ballot box. And um, the NCP was disgruntled because of they've been marginalized. They 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 don't believe uh, they they don't believe the, in the democracy because of the uh, the incumbent who was using the power of the incumbent being the state uh, powers, the state resources, not not as bad as we see in the Jamaica days. No, but I mean the advantages were there, um, and 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 all these other things they are marginalized and. Um, Obviously, they were not happy, and um, in in understanding this, Kukoi even had was once an, um, stood for an election and lost his deposit and left the country, angry. But um, domestically too, we have something called the uh, um, the, the leftists and, and other movements. Again, we we had civil society movements uh, before independence. I mean, and time of independence, but these civil service um, civil society movements were. Uh, discouraged, they were marginalized, they were not empowered. And um, again, this caused what uh, the youths um, start to channel themselves. And then we start to have groups like Moja and other groups coming up from it. And um, the, 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 the signs, I mean, approaching 1981, the signs of already the PPP government uh, been, um, have been overconfident and starting to lack in, in many ways. And um, um, this um, started to anger a lot of youths. And we have to understand too, we look at the, the geopolitics then. And um, yeah, there were tensions. There were tensions with, with the uh, Moja and, 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 and the police and the state up to when Moja was actually banned as a movement. But um, Moja too came about. There was, I mean, this movement of justice in Africa which which have its um, foundations or, or influence again from from Liberia, and um, in nineteen geopolitics in nineteen eighty, um, in 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 in, in, in nineteen seventy nine nineteen eighty the uh, seventy eight seventy nine in Liberia the Moja movement, which was led led by Dr. Emos Sawyer, uh, um, Dr. Fambule, and um, I mean um, and Marcos Matthew and others, and um, they they were very active in Monrovia. Uh, and the University of Liberia. And people that know Liberia, the university is technically just across the um, road to the mansion. And they, they participated in a lot of um, demonstrations, and one of the most um, effective one was the rice demonstration. Unfortunately, a lot of li I mean, lives were killed, and a lot of people were killed. But these demonstrations and this disgruntlement uh, the, uh, and, um, against the Talbot government gave rise to what happened with, with the coup of of 1980, Samuel Doe coming to power, and uh, by the uh, by the virtue of the uh, vibrancy of the Moja in in Liberia, um, most of these uh, leaders joined the government. Uh, Dr. Fambule, the, uh, Dr. Um, uh, but of Matthews even became uh, foreign ministers. They were the for, I mean foreign minister, minister of education and, and so on, and um, this boost the this boost the morals uh, of. Of the Moja movement in the Gambia, it was a small movement. Um, I mean, kind of radical, but and and the movement is the Moja movement across uh, Africa and especially West Africa. I mean, in the campuses in Freetown and and Foro Bay and other places, started to be very vibrant. And um, this was the time that Doe had to even come and visit the Gambia. But on leading to that, there were other uh, geopolitical uh, uh, um, influences. The Gambia break away relationship with Libya because of Libya was trying to Mobile Gaddafi now have accumulated wealth and started to be um, push his ide uh, ideologies uh, to, towards African nations because um, Gaddafi have lost um, uh, ground because what happened with was Gaddafi tried to lead the Arab nations uh, because um, uh, uh, Gamal, uh, Gamal Nasser in the Egyptian um, a leader that was killed, a charismatic leader that was killed. This was the vacuum that uh, Gaddafi wanted to step into, but he could not influence the Arab leaders. Then he decided to turn to the African uh, um, countries, I mean, I mean, the African countries, in order to use his wealth to influence them. That's when he came with his Jamaharia, I mean, the Green Book or whatever book you call it, and all those nonsense um, for the revolution. And, uh, and um, 
obviously, yes, econ economically, he was supporting African nations, but he was doing it to influence them. And Gambia was one of those nations where where he promised to build a mosque, uh, where he promised to uh, grand mosque, where he promised, I mean, I mean, where he had uh, the Gambia uh, transport, uh, Gambia, Libya transport, Yamaharia. This was the GPTC, as we know it after. Um, he was part of that and all the things. But he wanted to influence all the things and, and push the Gambia to that um, I mean, I mean, extreme. But the PPP government and the Gambia government was signatory to the non-allied movement. Um, they don't take part in, in either of the uh, main blocks, whether the East or the West. I mean, they are neutral. I mean, I mean, I mean um, their relationship are based on neutrality, of respect of, uh, of, of, of sovereign nations and so on. Gam um, Jawara did, did not want to take part in these issues and they break away relationship. And this is how the Gam I mean, the, the, the West, where Germany helped to take over the support that was given to GPTC. And this was the history. But um, 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 Libya did not, did not stop at that. In the, in the, in the mid-70s, Libya was fighting wars uh, with, with Chad and others. And, and the dictator who wanted to hold on to power, and he needed allies because he was from a minority tribe. What he was doing is he was using the money to bring in Tuareg, to bring in Africans, migrants, to recruit them into the Libyan forces. And these people were used, in fact, to fight the Libyan wars, not Libyan soldiers for that matter, I mean, as mercenaries. And they fight in Chad and other territories. But not only that, too, he used this um, minority, I mean, um, other minorities in Libya. He used I mean, West African Gambians to Senegalese, I mean, Africans for that matter, not only West Africans. And, 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 and they had a um, base in, the, in, in Libya. He used them against his own people to protect himself because he was a minority. Not only that, he used them to fight his wars in the sub-region. But now he used them to, to now to influence, because he tried to change influence government he could cannot now he have to change governments in order to influence what is in there so that he can be that powerful and that um and, and occupy that supreme position you see as people think that oh Gaddafi was good for africa no he was doing it for himself it's his ego and so on that's very important to know because a lot of african countries started to have problems um, and that's how uh, um, he sponsored um, rebellions and as we see to the la latter part in the 90s, uh, in, 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 in Sierra Leone, in, in, in Liberia and others. But uh, stepping on, skipping it into Gambia again, those domestic things uh, I mean, brought intentions. Now he started to attract the opposition. People used to travel to Libya to try to get funding for, for anything. Just pull, uh, mere opposition parties. I think the NCP did try. I'm not sure what good relationship they had. But um, at that time, in 1980, uh, another um, uh, you can see the Libyan influence where um, Solo Dabo was sponsored by Libya or given trucks, and these were military grade trucks, old trucks, and given to Solo Dabo. But Solo Dabo came and gave it to the NCP. That's why some people this is this is one of the reason many people thought the NCP knew something about the coup because of they got um, um, help from Solo Dabo. Solo Dabo got these things from from Libya. But I'm, 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 I don't have a clear opinion on that. I don't have clear fact on that. That's why we need to research these things to, to, to bring in facts. There are court proceedings, and we can study those things. And um, that's one of these things. The other, then, um, then uh, the uh, these tensions went on. Then um, it started. We had another thing in the Gambia called the leftists uh, in the unions. Um, this was the teachers' union mainly, in fact. Um, and, 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 and people that went to Gambia College. And they, most of them end up to be teachers, some of them trans, I mean, uh, transition from teachers to, to, to the civil service and so on. But they came in, keep in touch. You understand in those days it was very difficult. It's not the days of mobiles and texts and forums and so on. People used to write letters, you know, and, and um, I mean, and, and to pass on or pass messages through people. And their movements were not that vibrant or could not be that vibrant. That's why it's easier now to create movements than those days. But they were there. They, they have, um, some of these people um, subscribe to uh, communist I and mean, leftist ideologies. Some of them are just disgruntled because of, I mean, how things are uh, or how they perceive the thing, uh, the situation was not nice. And um, then there was a false line. Um, the, this call will continue. 
continue with, 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 with what? I mean, be the Russians and, and all these things. But Africa always will be the backdrop of things. Then there's a fault line at the field force. Now, every um, tensions were going on, and, um, and, and it, this came out to the field force. And they cannot, nobody could have done a coup without the field force. The Gambia did not have an army. They have, Gambia have a police force, and part of the f police force was the field force. The field force was the paramilitary part of the f uh, police that um, give them support, technical support, and so on, and do other ceremonial duties. And, and yeah. the, the other part of the field force was the uh, engineering squadron called um, PU, the Pioneer Unit. They were based in Farafenye. Uh, at that time, they, they built the Farafenye camp, they built the Farafenye MRC, and, and, and they, they used to take up other responsibilities. And they were based in, in Farafenye. They were, I mean, the field force was a small uh, group uh, of, of um, paramilitaries, probably two, I mean, two to less than 300 cent, um, if I can fully remember, less than 300 cent. Then, a fault line, obviously, I mean, a coup d'etat cannot happen without the field force taking part or being, 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 uh, being, um, being controlled. Then the tension arises um, when Mustafa Danso killed Eko Mahoney. Okay, before uh, Mustafa Danso killed Eko Mahoney, before the killing of Eko Mahoney, the rumors were on that there's something likely to happen, that like there are disgruntled people trying to overthrow the government. And that, that led to the, uh, the first um, uh, British tr uh, troops, because this was the Cold War, uh, Britain had interest uh, to protect uh, their, 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 their interests and uh, they sent a squadron of, of soldiers, people who lived in Bacau at that time or, um, um, or I mean, remember the soldiers coming to Bacau um, at the barracks and somewhere in Farafenye, I think, or they traveled from Farafenye and they did few series of exercises, I mean, in deterrent or probably preparation or to familiar themselves with the, with the landscape. And um, people in Bakao will remember when they used to come to the council uh, and so on. But nothing happened. They left, probably it was just a preparation. But then it happens in the morning, Mustafa Danso, um, a private in the field force, uh, shot, uh, assassinated um, Eko Mahoney. Eko Mahoney was the camp commander of the, um, uh, um, the, the commander of the field force uh, in Bakao. <laughs> When this thing happened, speculation went on, reasons were given that um, Danso was disgruntled, Danso was smoking, and, and, and he asked him, I mean, be disrespect, and he shot him. But uh, um, investigations, latter part, said no, no, actually, this was part of the preparation for the coup. Dan, I mean, uh, Mahoney was seen some, as someone who would have been an obstacle, and they needed to get him out. And, uh, and they said that Danso was promised that Gambia uh, would not have, um, I mean, I mean, kill him. And, and it would be time he would go to the courts and be prison, the coup would happen and he would be released. And eventually that happened. But this fault line, um, and Danso was killed, um, I mean, Eko um, Mokoni was killed. He was replaced by his deputy, who was um, um, Kikalabande. Kikalabande, I mean, um, I mean, commanded the uh, took over the position of the um, um, command of the field force, and the tension continued because there was um, um, another I mean, senior officer called Sub Subuhana Bojan. So Subuhana Bojan was known to be a rebel. I mean, in in that time to be rebellious and uh, was suspe suspected to be part of the conspirators, and um, he had some disciplinary uh, proceedings taken, and he was discharged from the services. And he refused to um, leave his I mean, his um, residence in in Bacau, um, Bacau depot, just by the seaside. And uh, but he he removes his family. His family were relocated in Newtown, but he refused to move out, and he resisted. And the tension went to the court. They went to the courts, and the court I mean, served him a warrant. And he still removed, uh, refused to to budge. And um, in that time, he was these people that I mean mystically believe in juju and all those kind of things. He was a good, I mean, soldier um, and a marksman and been known for that. And, and the tension kept on going uh, with the senior officers and, 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 and Bojang, it was not handled well. Then the day of the coup, remember I was young. Um, from what I understand, and most of this thing is um, 
by research and getting to know people and obviously be in the midst of things happening knowingly. But the day of the coup, it was very innocent. I'll tell you, most even elderly people don't know what a coup d'etat is. I can remember when we heard, what we heard in Bakao was that Kikalabande was shot, was killed. And as kids we ran, I think I was about, uh, I was in primary six to go to Form 1, um, the summer of uh, summer holidays. We ran to Kikabla Bande's house. Um, he's like an uncle to us. Um, he was a neighbor, um, walking distance. And we ran. And actually, as kids, we saw the body because it was still at, um, uh, at his doorstep. What actually, what we understand after the, what happened in that, that night of the coup, um, a group that, um, the group that, 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 that effected the coup, Kukoi and his team, um, I'll come to how the group was made up. Kuka and his team went to ask for the Amore key. Then, then the protocol was that the camp commander kicks the Amore key. And they call, call his attention. He came out. And obviously he was in his night, nightgown. He was not expecting a call out. Tells you how peaceful the country was. Even the commander of the um, field force did not have a security. Not even a white man. He was living with his family, lying down peacefully. He never thought, think of anything, even though a year before his um, his I mean predecessor was killed, assassinated. But he would not think that he would be waking up in the night and be killed. We should understand when Gambian psyche uh, started to change. This is very important. And he was killed, and very sad. Obviously, uh, the family had the gunshots. And they had to come out and they saw their dad, their wife, and um, husband, I mean, their, um, their son, because of the mother was living there as well. They're originally from Basic. The mother was living in the house. It was traumatizing. And there's nothing they can do. It's, 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 it's not a normal phenomenon, I mean, thing to happen. I mean, they were probably froze. They, I mean, there's nothing, nothing like using telephones to call for support or anything. And when we had this, we kids, we ran. And, when, and we even saw the body being covered up and later been taken away to the mortuary. But even at that time, people don't know what was going on. We just had this and everybody was confused. But we, we learned that to, there was kind of a firing in, in the depot, but it was like, um, it's not heavy firing. It was, I mean, I mean local uh, bam, bam, I mean, uh, rifles, bam, 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 and that's it. But, I mean, People run away from uh, the depot and we see vehicles running around. People don't know what, what it was. And then we hear, it's a coup d'etat, it's a coup d'etat. And it's a coup d'etat, most even adults don't know what coup d'etat was. And you know, after it starts sinking and sinking, we the kids, we didn't know actually where uh, this is. But for kids, it was like fun. It was like adventure. To be candid, we ran to places. If we hear something, we, we run to that. We ran to um, Bacow uh, Depot and saw people being given weapons. I mean, and I, I heard people argue now, but I cannot remember that you have to ask for a voter card. If you have a voter card, they give you a weapon, but I cannot remember that. I know that every time Dick and Harry was given a weapon and three minutes training, this is what you do, this is what you do. We remember in those days, the Klasnikov were few. Few Klasnikov, the rest of it was just a uh, Mark Force, uh, SLRs, and, 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 and others. And um, they ran out of weapons uh, quickly, and all, uh, people started to be given batons and, and seals, uh, rare gears. And I um, remember too, in PWD, people started to take trucks and vehicles out, I mean, anything, I mean, just jump. It was completely chaos. Kids were running around, and a little bit of kids, I mean, phone we have was to hear that, oh, there was looting. There's not much looting in Bacal. There's obviously control. I remember we going to um, the hotels. I mean, oh, there you can you know, run around, pick things and stuff like that. Generally, there's not much in the hotels. At that time of the year, the hotels are closed, they are on a renovation. But we hear news coming. And, you know, we, we used to hear them, Radio Kanka. Oh, this is happening here, this is happening there, and rumors there. But what we understand that happened, from my research and knowing things, um, the coup was bigger than that. A lot of people were involved, and disgruntled people from the opposition, from civil, I mean, from the move, I mean, different movement and so on. But again, there was a disagreement. Uh, who, who should run the coup? Kukai came in to, to do the operations, and they were meant to be other people that were involved, that should be this. But last minute, 
Cook had one it for himself, thinking that why should I over uh, why should I be the person to come and lead the coup and, and end up passing it on to others? I'll have to take it. Then Cook hastily, hastily went and got people that he knows. And that's why majority of them are of his kind of family. You see? This is how it happened. He went just to pick people he can influence. Most of them are taxi drivers and you see, I think two full full force also joined the coup. And um, this is how he did it. He 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 managed to have rep I mean hunting guns and a pistol he had, and they uh, attacked and uh, and they overrun. But when and um, the uh, changing something and um, the something else happened uh, um, was the game changer. And and this is very interesting. When they attacked the depot, and um, oh sorry, I forgot that. The day of um, Mahoney's burial, day of Mahoney burial, the Senegalese came into the Gambia. A Senegalese contingent came into the Gambia. Apparently, some of them in, even parachuted that day and came to the Gambia because they thought the coup was going to happen. And they stayed in Bacau again for a while and they did some exercises with this thing and they left. Nothing happened. Then a, another contingent came back from from United Kingdom called, called the Gokas. This, I mean, Gokas people from the uh, Himalayas and um, Na Na Nepal. And they, they were in the Gambia with some white, obviously white officers were a part of them, but mostly were Gokas. They stayed in the Gambia for uh, another four, four, six weeks again, exercising this thing, and they left before the coup. This was before the coup. And um, on the day of the coup, this was important. The reason I raised this was important because this is what we call contingency planning. And because there was a contingency planning, one of the officers that benefited from this contingency training was um, as, um, Wagan Fight. He was a sergeant, Sergeant Wagan Fight. And remember, most of these people were not educated, but they were smart. Sergeant Wagan Fight, when he had an attack at the barracks, at the depot, when he jumped out of the fence, he ran to the Senegalese embassy. The Senegalese embassy was resident. Um, because all the embassies used to be in Banyun itself. But they, they res their residence used to, used to be in Bacau along the Atlantic Road. And the Senegalese ambassador was living uh, opposite uh, Fajara Hotel uh, at the side of the Casorina nightclub. People um, that my age will remember Casorina nightclub. Uh, opposite Casorina nightclub, there's a bungalow there, a small uh, bungalow. I um, mean, there, there's where, where he lived. It's interesting, when we were Kids, we thought those things were mighty buildings, you know. But now it was just a small bungalow, probably three bedroom bungalow. But it was the ambassador's place, it was important. But um, Wagan Fai ran from depot, obviously went past the British embassy residence, went past the uh, uh, American embassy residence, and, and went to the Senegalese. This is very important, interesting, because he knew that there's a treaty between Gambia and Senegal. And because there's a contingency plan, they have done exercises with Senegal. Yes, they don't exercise with the British, but he knows that the most um, strategic uh, um, thing to do was to go to Senegal because they are next door and anything would have. Um, these are um, to understand the geopolitics of what, what we have together. Then he went there and he said, I think this guy was Mr. Menga or something like that. He said to him that, oh, we, our barracks was attacked. Probably, and I'm not sure whether he knows uh, exactly what happened. It's sad that these people were not interviewed. We don't have records on this or anything. But they have families. Probably they have their families might have a conversation and, um, and, and to, to get these records. And these are one of the things. After December, these are the things I want to do. I want to take a back seat. I want to go back and, and do more research to write things and, and to share. Um, yeah. But we'll get it. And he went, um, Sergeant Wagan Fai went to the um, ambassador, and this ambassador said, Let, we have to go to Banyu. Banyu is an island. Luckily, the, the bridge was not closed because of the, the field force. I mean, the, 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 the coup, coup d'etat, coup and orders. It was just, they didn't have any, anything, I mean, they didn't know what we're doing. They just managed to do this and now go to Radio Gambia to make the announcement. And Sergeant Wagan Fai, they went to the um, Senegalese embassy, in in Banjo. Another interesting thing. Another person who used to be a field force, but a veteran, Second World War veteran, Sergeant Usman Diallo, uh, an uncle of mine, um, was retired, and now he was a white man at Central Bank. And um, that morning, 
our streets. We remember when we went to watch, uh, watch, um, uh, visit Kikalabanda's uh, body. When we heard about the story, I remember that he came there, and we were there, and he left. That early, it was like early, early morning in Gambia, and he left, but not knowing, he went and took the workers' bus and traveled to Banjul, going to work. He went to work at the center bank, and whilst at the center bank. Someone came, someone with a weapon came, I mean, and this was probably nine o'clock or so. It's interesting. This point, why did I try to put a time over it? Maybe about nine o'clock or so. Because why did I say about nine or nine, nine, ten, eleven, twelve? Probably another. Why? Because the weapon distributions took time for, for it to reach to certain people. Then if anyone went to attack him, attack this um, central bank, apparently the old man, he was still... Uh, physically fit, managed to um, disarm this gentleman and use the same weapon and kill him. When he killed him, he proceeded to the police station and went to report himself, Banyan police station, to report himself. By then, he did not even know what was happening. He knew that something was not right. Could kick Alabama was killed. He's a boy. Someone tried to, tried to kill him. He disarmed and killed him. He went to the police station and he found the inspector general of police who was a blind book and some other senior officers. And they were there contemplating. You see, at this time, even the rebels, uh, Kukoi did not have an entry to Banjun. He, he, he was running around like a headless chicken within Bakau area and, and, uh, and to station himself. Because remember, whatever you do, you try to be safe first. He's the leader. He was trying to build himself to be safe. Then um, uh, when he get to, um, when Mr. Uh, Sergeant Smajalo, late, may he sold their soldiers in peace, most of these people, um, went to the station and reported himself. They said um, a blind boob knew him because of these people thought, I mean, where them, they, 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 they meant, I mean, uh, this is, and said to him, uh, uh, uncle, they call him uncle, uh, 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 some uh, could it more. Then Sanyu Usman said to them, and a minister, where are the ministers? And Sanyu Usman started to organize them. He's a veteran, World War II veteran, started to organize the police. But we don't even hear Wagan Fai's name in our history. We don't see anything. Sanyu Usman Jalos. And if the it one coup was foiled, it's these two people. You remember the Senegalese role to the ambassador. And Sanyu Usman too organizing a resistance. Yes, a blind boob, obviously, and others should have been recognized. But we have to take it as it went. Sanyu Usman said to them, look, we have to organize. And they started to barricade to form a defensive um, um, posture uh, within the police uh, head, um, la, police station. Then he signed it smart because of he knew some of these ministers, he went for them. He went for the vice president, Andrus Kamala. He was not even, you see, the rebels didn't even have ways to capture these people first. He went and got this, um, this thing, uh, as, um, and, um, got the vice president, went and escorted, got MC Jalo. Uh, one, one way or the other, he man they managed to get some of the ministers and some dignitaries to the station. This is supposed to hold, to show that they have a resemblance of a government in control. It's important to show that you are in charge, you are in control, you are defending that constitution. You did not abandon the constitution. Now, the vice president was someone who was responsible of the state now. He, he's alive and he's resisting um, the coup d'etat. This gift, again, Senegal could have come in, in a different way, but this is what happened. Now, because of that, now they escorted the vice president to the Senegalese um, High Commission. Now, if Wagan Fai did not have um, jumped out and get the Senegalese ambassador to his office, would they have gone to have a means of communication? That's how they had a means of communication to communicate to Dakar. To say this is happening and this is the resistance. Then Dakar communicated obviously to, to London. This is how Jawara, uh, when, when this foreign service um, um, uh, informed Jawara of the coup d'etat, and, and Jawara said, yes, and I, I have this communicate from Senegal as well. And now I want to go to Senegal because we have a treaty and I want to work from there, but I will expect your support as well. You see, because of the Cold War. And uh, why the Cold War? When the coup, when Kukwe Sama Sanyang made the announcement, and I'm not going to name the person who they uh, alleged wrote the speech, who was in Kukwe. And uh, that person was a former teacher, and you can see how loaded it was with anger. 
how well loaded it was with communists and socialists, uh, not even socialists, with I mean, long live the revolution and the not long live the struggle, uh, the People's Republic of Russia, I mean, and all those comrades of, of the Guinea Bissau comrades of Guinea Conakry, you know, that's this it. That's did it for Gambia. The minute because first thing in end in Equidita is to control um, I mean the domestic but uh, control the geopolitical uh, narrative. You don't want to threaten other people's freedom, other people's interests in that manner. But he did. It was the Cold War. Now the British, I mean the Americans and the Senegalese now, they don't want Gambia to turn to be a communist country. That means that Gambia, Guinea Bissau and Guinea Conakry. This was they don't want territories. Now Kukai have to go. This thing have to be dealt with. And um yeah. Then through that intervention at the embassy and, and the resistance, they had a resistance at the um at the um, at the police police the, uh, this thing. Looting happened in Bangu and Selkona and others. But what this police uh, <clears throat> what this police um resistance did was they had a kind of a control. They control an entity and at times they would go out and raid and arrest rebels and bring them back in hostage and kill and fight. They, they used to fight up to the bridge, clear, go patrol for, from, this is called fighting patrol to the bridge. They used to go fighting patrol to the state house. They used to go fighting patrol to, to the port because they were trying to keep a, a buffer zone because this is important. Even you have foreign forces coming, you need to hold a ground, a ground that they will come and you host them. Important we uh, understand. They did that. They did very well. Another thing happened. <sighs> in fighting happened within the uh, people that do the coup d'etat. Now, uh, comrades, be uh, Samba Chayang started to, I mean, pins uh, the Spengu George and others started to allegation of counter coup coup d'etats. You know, uh, obviously, that's to try to settle themselves up. And the alle allegations went around, they killed each other. And um and Kukai uh, was flexing his muscles, and um Senegalese in intervened. Senegalese intervention um become a game changer in many ways, and in in a sense domestically things were calm. I mean apart from not not calm. I mean is apart from good people going out running around uh, in chaos, headless chicken. There's no direction or knowing what was happening. Announcement was made. That's it. But they don't know how to proceed from there. They try to have control. They could not, um, because they they themselves started to fight each other. But when Senegal intervened, it became a game changer. Now some nation nationalistic sentiments jump out. Some people even jump out thinking, "Oh, Senegal is invading Gambia." This was the narrative. Some people just jump out. They, they don't believe in the coup. They don't even know what coup was. They just thought that Senegal is invading Gambia. We have to fight. Um, and and uh, that's a story for that. Then um, the the Senegalists jump in. Then obviously, and the coup had popularity in a sense that people jump in to say, "Oh, we're they going to fight, defend ourselves, Senegalists interfere in our domestic this thing." That was the narrative. Then um, obviously, Kukoy knew knew now things are even getting more serious. Kukoy tried to get the then he tried to get the chief for alcohol he went on get the most influential he can get hold of in combo uh people like Sanji, um, chief sanjali bojang to come and denounce jawara uh how i mean i mean unfortunately had hostage of the jawara's family brought them on on media to i mean um, as hostage situation and he got some of our um senegalese um I mean, elderly in uh, in the community uh, to come on the radio um, and to denounce Senegal for intervention and stuff like that. And he got the, the son of the, I think, Serin Tuba or something like that, who was resident in Bacau to denounce the coup. I mean, they, he, they did all that out of desperation. But they, um, that did not work. And um, it continued. The Senegal, the other implications were apart. Um, those implications, then now the Senegalese citizens in the Gambia life became a threat. I remember we 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 having some run to our houses to be safe, you know, uh, and and I'm yeah, because this this were our people, our neighbors, our families, and um, in those sense. But uh, for physically, I have never heard of any Senegalese being harmed. But they were rumors that we let us arrest the Senegalese and so on. But for the Gambian people, 
Gambian generally defended and saved because we have a lot of people sleep, I mean, used to sleep in our houses, safe, I mean, keep them safe and so forth. That shows you the solidarity we have together as people. And um, the another in development, another person, may his soul rest in peace, is Brother Modunyai, Sock Inspector Modunyai. This is the younger brother of Naunyai. Modunyai was at the PU barracks in Farafin. When they had about the coup, I think it took them actually 48 hours or so. Did he have a platoon, probably 20 men, I don't know, something, a group, you see, it's not documented. And they travel through the River Gambia and, and find themselves at the Denton Bridge. When they get to the Denton Bridge, they maneuver their way, pretend to be part of the rebels or support the rebels. Because what? They had about the resistance at the police station. Because before the I mean, communication line got cut off, they managed to know that there's a resistance at the stage, um, Banyan police station. You see, again, if Sanyan Usman Diallo have not created that resistance, if, if the Wagan have not created the Senegalese um, ambassador to be in, in position for the communication, and Mondiai would not have, ha, I mean, I mean, have um, this thinking, strategic thinking to do, Mondiai came his with men to reinforce the small team of, 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 um, of loyal forces in Banyan. This is how they hold on to Banyan. This is how they hold on to Banyan. It, it went on a few days. <laughs> don't, uh, I don't, uh, don't catch me on the days. It, uh, it lasted about a week. Went on, on a few, few days. Kukoi and his Bakau connection. Kukoi was based in Bakau. Kukoi um, was um, spending night in Bakau, not the barracks, in, in town. And I am not going to name the families. This, these are my neighbors. Uh, they are my kotos. I mean, I mean, I call them kotos. They are all past. Because I was, my father was an old man. They called my father uncle. I called him Koto. They spent, and these people were leftists as well. They were civil servants. But they host Kukoi. Kukoi comes in the night and goes out first thing in the morning. And the reason we know, um, we are neighbors, not only that, but they have a checkpoints in our street. Checkpoints. Just by our, I mean, people that know our where we live, the every to the PWG that route coming into Bakau, they have checkpoints there to guard that area because of they have to drive through there, then turn it towards Kajikali. The and two residents were these two places not far. Then he alternate sleep here today, the next day the other place in around the that St. Kevin side. And um unfortunately fortunate one of these nights, my brother elder brothers and owners were um I mean, I mean, in fact, they were part of the rebellion because when they had Senegal jumping, they went and took guns, you know, but I mean, they, um, you know, um, Nongo, I mean, they stayed within Bakao and the Bakao environment. They never went to the airport. They never fight. Uh, or they never went to where the fighting was. They just got the guns and they said that they're going to defend themselves. And um, um, this is your group of them. I mean, they, they were staying with my brother. I mean, this group was staying with my brother. And um, unfortunately, one of the guys, Dauda, if you just forget Dauda's name, Dauda was this, you know, in the group, he was very pious, I mean, praying and so he, I mean, he don't, was not taking part in most of the things that was happening with the young, young guys. And that night, Dauda said he was going to pray. He want to go and um, get water from the tap for abolition because um, where they were living, they were the other side. They cannot come because we locked the doors. They cannot come round to the scene. But Dauda wanted to go out uh, to to the tap to ab abolition, and because nobody sleeps in the night, we can hear them saying, "Oh, Dauda, bull them, bull them." But Dauda decided to go. It was a curfew. He just wanted to go to the tap. Dauda went to the tap, and we just hear. That was the first time I know that the blood would touch I and mean, these things because we had Dauda's cry before we heard, had the uh, blood. That's how, I mean, I know what, how speed of blood is. Dauda cry, I'm just, I mean, in Mandinka, call out his mom. I'm, I'm, I'm shot, I'm shot. And before Dauda said I'm shot, we can hear from the Johnson saying shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Because the guy was a free force, shoot him, shoot him. He was a Aku guy, free force. I, 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 I know, I know that guy very well, and he was arrested and in prison anyway. He served his time, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. And next minute, Dauda was shot, um, and and bleeding. And 
and the everybody because the checkpoint was there they this all these people were scared my brothers and friends were scared to go and rescue they were saying they were new one new one new one my father has to come out he he was a veteran as well my father with a very small statue had to come come out and went and and pulled out rescue him from the middle of the road to the side of our house and luckily one of the ambulance was running and they picked out and took him to the hospital but he died that was one of one of another death after uh, I've witnessed in Dakar I mean in our in my house I mean technically in my house a brother a very light-skinned I, I will have to find out about him again his family again that thing happened in Bacal and Kukoi was running now and um, on the Thursday I think it was a Thursday the day Kukoi ran we knew Kukoi was running from Bacal the guy that escorted Kukoi was a brother of us. Um, he was what we call in all of our bottom bar. You know, when we went to the um, circumcision, he was the head of the, I mean, I mean our circumcision uh, proceedings or what you call them. And he was called Bimbam. I mean, he was a I mean, muscular Bimbam. He was a bodyguard to Kukoi. Because that day, that afternoon, uh, around 2 p.m., Bim came back home, you know, on those days, you know, Bim started to put off his jujus and we were standing there, you know, and um, I can remember um, some of the old mm, people pa, coming around giving him jujus to live in because um, he was contracted to escort Kukoi. And now Bim Bam have to escort, ex, ex, escort Kukoi. We knew Kukoi was living that day. We knew the, uh, the rebellion would be finished. We back out, I mean, some of this menu. And that afternoon, they left Bacau by four because Kukoi was in the other residence. I said he used to stay the second residence and they went and escort him and they put in a con con convoy. That's um, that's how they drove, uh, drove out to Combo, uh, to Khartoum, Ka and they, they left the uh, uh, um, and Kukoi, Kukoi escaped. Then, um, obviously. The Senegalese were making progress. Senegal um, entered through the airport, parasited themselves, some were killed. And I'll say something. There's a lot of exaggeration about how many people were killed. Because uh, recently, some APRC guys lying about thousands of thousands of people dead is a lie. Yes, probably hundreds or so. And most of these people kill each other. My other uncle, I mean, um, I mean, uh, I call him an uncle. No, a brother, another brother who was a headmaster at at um, um, Yaya Bayo Pit Bimbam Yeskoto Yaya Bayo Bimbam. They said, may his soul rest in peace. Uh, another uncle called Abdul. Uh, he was a headmaster uh, at um, headmaster at uh, from Combo, somewhere in Combo, and he was a leftist. He was from Gambia College, and Abdul was killed in Dipakunda by another rebel trying to um, end this thing. Many people were killed in this manner. Many killed were, people were killed. There was rumors and lies that um, this guy used to come and um, go around saying the Namala Chishon, um, like uh, Aliu Salah. That was all lies fabricated. Namala Chish, Nangulo, Pam. Wahonala, Buhesanga, Hesa, Pam. Let show us which family those victims came from. No. Yeah, some people died by accidents of killing each other on um, road accident and, and other things. But the Senegalese did not really have big resistance. Uh, in fact, when they were approaching by parachute, yes, the rebels shot at some of them. But uh, how many people died, we don't know. But they, they ab uh, aborted the, this thing, and, and, and I think they, they, they went out to Bafuloso. That's where they dropped their this thing, and, and those, the team they've dropped in Buffalo to, uh, I mean, advances. That's, I'm happy that I was in the army. Um, I went to the army now to understand what had happened. The advances from Bar Buffalo, to, because what they, for their understanding, they just know about the strength, because they, they've been there before. They thought that they could just come and drop at the surprise drop at the airport. But when they started to drop, they started to receive fire. The plane went back to Buffalo, just down there and dropped there. And the advances and took the airport easy. 
and this is how another group was coming from Casamas to, to um, towards Birkama and they had little bit of resistance, gunshot, pam, 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 pam. You understand there was no enough ammunition in the country. There were not enough um, automatic weapons in the country. Most of them were marked for this thing. They are not, most of these people were not trained to fight anything. They were given three minutes, I mean, training to fire. Some of them, if, if it jam, if it, they don't know how to go by to take off that jam, they were abandoned and so on. And they came to Birkama and, 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 and others came and came amphibia to, to Khartoum. I mean, this is how they overrun them. Yeah, they, it took a week. It could have took, taken less, but probably they were avoiding casualties. They were avoiding casualties. And this thing even gives Kukoi the opportunity um, I mean, I mean, to drive out um, on the Thursday. And um, they came in, and eventually Bakau was the last point because we had the back and the barrage went Bakau. They thought Kukoi would be holding back at Bakau, Radio Gambia. And when they came, a, a group of us went through Radio Gambia, took over Radio Gambia, no resistance. And, uh, and the convoy, I mean, I mean, the convoy of, 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 of Amokas was in front before even the troops. And no resistance, nobody fired at them. In fact, they were welcome. And that's how they drove into, and drove into Bakau Barracks. No fire, no nothing. And, and the coup, that's how the coup finished. But that day, again, the important thing again is here, what I was telling people about the importance of the resistance in, in, in in um in in Banjun. What the police loyal police officers, our I mean I mean Sergeant Usman, Tang Tambajangs, uh, Ablaim Boop and, and others, uh the, the uh, Mondiai from from the PU, Nalanjai's brother and others what they did. I I don't know most of their names. I mean but these are the people I can remember. Um the, because they were ra doing raids. Uh, raids um in fact um Subhana Bojang was said to be disappeared. No, he was this. No, he was killed by the police at um, at the state house by, by the state house. Uh, the person that killed him, in fact, um, who, um, I think he passed away now, was a field force. That's you see. That's why we have to be very careful about this juju thing. We have to be very careful about this juju thing. He was killed. He had all his juju, and he was shot. He was not shot by a rocket or anything. He was shot by an AK-47. If he was killed at the state house, um, at the state house, people mystery saying that he disappeared for years. People believe that he was no, but we knew because we had that story and we believe it, and it's it, it kind of become a, 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 the fact. But he he didn't survive because he he did not turn up again. But again, another thing that would they managed to hold on to that. That's why Saudi Arabia was able to be. I mean, I mean, the Senegalists had no problem coming to Banjul, and Saudi Arabia was able to be airlifted. Um, to this thing and they regain this thing. This is how they easily did, do do this. And Kukoi left and and went to Guinea uh, Guinea Bissau. Um, Yaya yeah, Bimbam Yaya Bio have I mean were returned. When he, when when they crossed, Yaya refused to go. He was not part of the coup. He just went for an escort. He, when they crossed, Bimbam came back and said to us that Kukoi Dauna. We knew that Kukoi Dauna Thursday night. Because he came in late in the night to send a Kukoi down, probably after midnight, I can't remember. By Friday, we woke up and when the Senegalese were coming, we knew there's nothing. Kukoi was not here. And this is how it happened. And um, Kukoi left and went to Guinea. But the import, uh, interesting part of it is you see the individuals, individual people that fought, individuals that make this thing happen. And Senegal, I mean, the role of Senegal could not have happened without with us. I mean, um, Sergeant Wagan Fai, Sergeant Usman Dialos, and, and the um, Ablaim Boops, and others. Where are the memories? Where are, where's the history? Where is this document and so on? This, we cannot be a country without recognizing um, the, um, the contributions of our citizens. And again, if I have time, I was explain. You see, again, we said this when the um, when we had independence, we marginalized. That's where it started. We marginalized the 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 the, the, um, the civil society first. And you know that most of these politicians came out from civil society, but so civil society was marginalized first. Gambia had a vibrant. Um, yes, it's a small country, but we had a vibrant youth movements then. And um, if you consider that 
in the time of, time of the colony, it was only the Combo St. Mary uh, and the Cape St. Mary that was I mean, populated uh, with, with, with these educated youths or whatever it is. But they hit, um, as kids we can remember, I can remember the civil rights movement in Bacau, I'll tell you that. I remember my sisters who come from very conservative family. My brother is here, Francis Nya is here, I will tell you. Um, in fact, one of my sister was called Fatma Togodien because of the civil rights movement. They used to have their Afro. I mean, I mean, a fuller guy with an Afro. They put on shirts and they tie it, tie their shirts, you know, just ask what they see in America. What they see in America. And, um, and others, John and um, Anna, uh, is it Anna Samba? And, and I can tell you, I mean, I mean, a lot of sisters, we are part of this. And, and brothers as well. Our brothers as well, the Axi, uh, the Axi guys, um, I mean, I mean, and, all, and in Banjun, the same thing, the Vus and so on. But even the music, the music was the super eagles and everything else was talking about the civil rights movement. We had, it, but we discourage them. This, be it radical, whatever it is, is part of what built a country. We discourage all this, I mean, I mean, uh, these things and marginalize them and started to, 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 to to marginalize them and infiltrate them and started giving scholarships to some of them to take them away. They will never come back, you know, uh, thinking that they solved the problem. But from the civil society, because this is the way they, dis they um, disregarded Francis Small and, I mean, I mean, and others. Um, and look at it today. That's why we cannot honor anybody else. If we, we, we could not honor Francis Small and, um, and all these other people, we will not honor the, our present leaders. That's why we need to change. We continue from there. <coughs> um, Politicians, UP, we went and, and I mean, I mean, marginalized the UP and create this opportunity, uh, politics of opportunism. That's why today we have this political of opportunism, incumbency, cross capex. UP could have joined government. We have few educated people. What, what was wrong of the PPP saying, UP, come and take these positions? We build this country together. Election come, let's go and go back to the people. Whoever they vote for, we continue. But no, you have to come, come into our party disregard your party and, and be part of it. And that nurture this thing of uh Kubuka take it and them legacy government. Then demolo government put legal government, then them government put um something. This thing continue. But the youths were marginalized, you see, and um and and and, 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 and with the geopolitics, the moja and everything else, radicals, what did they do? They banned them. They banned the moja. And I'll tell you something very interesting. Moja was just a small clique of people. But you have to understand influence. They were very influential. Because as kids, we want to be, I mean, we are programmed to be radical. And we look up to, I mean, radical uh, postures or positions. And um, I was young. Um, I still now, I cannot write properly. I'm, I'm very bad handwriting. But I have a friend, uh, Babuka Itundao, may his soul rest in peace. He was, I mean, we were radical kids around. We seen our cultures and doing radical stuff. And um, we had about Moja G, Moja G, Moja G. And uh, we used to still paint because Babuka Jundao used to, he, he ended up to be a, a painter. He used to go to certain quarters, he used to paint. He we used to steal the paint. And in the night, well, not, not night in fact, it's just after Timis. Gambia was so less people in, in, in Bakao area. Some after Timis, you go to certain areas, nobody will be there. Even yo yo, you go out, nobody will be there. Your, in those days in Bacau, you see where the Shefa always. It was so remote. The Shefa was so remote. Um, by even after you, that is, it's like the boundary. Shefa was like the boundary. We used to go areas like that, and Bob now would write Moja G. And you know, we know the CIDs. <laughs> CIDs used to come around. And you see, some of our cutters used to even go around busting, yeah, your Kodef, your Kodef. We know where they were lying. You see, but. That's why a government should not be that scared. Most of these things are not much. It's just venting. It's just venting. You have to be, uh, you have to have the right people around to understand these things. Then these things are still happening. People will go on Facebook, vent, 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 or you, uh, this thing. But yes, it should be controlled. But it doesn't mean that we need to criminalize them. When Moja was criminalized, it, it in fact gave them strict credit. And that strict credit, I mean, gave them more influence. 
if Mojo was led to be what it should be a civil society, let them be radical, let them speak out. What harm can that do? Let them, let them be challenged, let them be engaged, let them be exposed, or let them expose the system, and we'll be better off. These are the things we will need to learn from this. But as I said, um, gallantry speak soldiers. Um, um, Sergeant Wagan, Wagan Fai, when the coup happened, uh, at depot, he ran to the Senegalese embassy, and, and so the Senegalese ambassador uh, get into Banjun, and that's how the communication was established between Gambia and Senegal. Sergeant Usman Jalo, um, I mean, went to um, uh, a veteran, World War II, went to work at the Central Bank. Someone threatened his life. He, he disarmed him and killed him and reported himself and found the police disoriented, and he helped them because of his been to war um, and uh, to organize them. And that's how the resistance started. Uh, bro Brother Moon Jai, who was at the PU, learned about the, the resistance in Banjun, decided to organize uh, a team and took the river Gambia and got to Banjun and had the resistance. And um, other people did, did so much or other things. But again, um, the case of another thing happened uh, was the uh, family of Jawara. Uh, because um, I have this, actually have this... Um, I have copy copy of this book, uh, con co the conflict of lions. I will ask I Amen. Mean, uh, turns um, uh, turns strong. Gambians to read this. Um, it 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 was easy for me to find the facts. I mean, it's 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 actually factual, but it's some of it's put it. I mean, because the SAS are not allowed to or uh, um divert some of the um, this thing. What they do, they pretend some of it to be, um, to be, um, to be, um, to be, um, what do you call it? A, a friction. But I'll tell you, the conflict of lions is something that most uh, Gambians should read. Gambians should read. Um, and it will tell you a lot about the inside of the coup. Um, and, and, being, and, 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 and you will understand more. It helps me to understand a lot. And uh, what happened? These are the SAS that rescue the family of Saudaura. Uh, and uh, what happened? They, they obviously organized things and um, they were taken to the MRC that they were ill. Everything. Intelligence is, is just crazy, I'll tell you. They managed to convince the rebels that these people needed medical, they needed to go to MRC. It was all pre planned. By that time, these people have flew out. I mean, for their bases, um, with their rock sacks, with everything ready, Dakar into Gambia. And um, they went to the MRC. And obviously, one of the doctors had to do the right thing. I mean, I mean and let them use the white coats to, to blend in. And that's how they managed. I forgot the name of the Michael, if I had the name, um, uh, something Yai. Yeah. Uh, this this was this this guy was um um this guy was a uh, bana bana in Bakau. He used to sell fish, something jai, something jai. My and uh, he was at the MRC, and this were people guarding this pill. And again, the doing jai or something. And the reason he was there, he was not a soldier, because he was one of those people with many terry have everything he chew on he was chewing on some uh, 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 oh god knows what he had even rings and that's why he was there kukoi would believe him to be able to protect the he survived <laughs> the minute the minute you know some of these things we could not have said this before because they were alive and you know and families would this but the minute he saw this white coat people turn around to be soldiers and just holding the rebels and cutting them off he, he turned around and in fact shot, shot, shot his colleague force to save himself and gave his, his weapon and he was put aside. That's how they moved in and, and rescued the family of this thing and went through the American emba uh, British embassy, I think, down the hill and to the American co compound and that's how they got, got the family out. This is, these are the things that happened, guys. Sorry, I, I have to go. I have to go to work. But thank you, Dembo. It's Dembo that... Uh, Facebook um, interaction with Dembo. I just wanted to come and share this. But as I said, December, I think I would change course for what I'm doing. I hope we have the uh, right government by December or at least a change. Then 
this is where I want to go. I want to go and look at some of these things, especially um, um, the, 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 the um, bordering national security, um, which I mean, and uh, bordering um, political history. These are the things I want to look at Gambia to document as much as possible and, and share. I want to do this and share because we, we don't read that much. I want to do these things in documentary form to, 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 pre to present. But as I said, this is a perspective. Don't take it all as uh, as I know it or as I see it. I was young, but I my interest I decided to and I was lucky to to, to be from Bacau and um, interacted with some of these people that took part or had uh, I mean their their experience and so on. This is what I presented um, based on my understanding. This is what 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 I believe transpired, but other people will have a different narrative. But we'll try and get this, um, I mean, this discussion is going, guys. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you. At least I'm not talking about Adam Abaro. Thank you. <laughs>